and good morning. It is another beautiful day and another beautiful weekend. Ready for another diagnostic call shift. This is my last diagnostic radiology weekend shift of probably my entire life and definitely of residency. You may remember I just did one of these two weekends ago, but I ended up switching my schedule to work this weekend. That way I finish these sooner. So you already know what it is. Let's make our first stop for the weekend, Starbucks. All right, so it is 7.45. We are going into the hospital now. Oh, and if you guys are new to my channel, my name is Michael, AKA Dr. Cellini, and I am a fifth year interventional radiology resident. And I'm about to start my two day weekend call shift or at 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. both days. And it's about to start now. Let's get to work. And as you know, first thing we gotta do is put in wifey's little breakfast parfait into the fridge. Because you know I have the best wife in the world. And I get breakfast. So I know on my last video, a lot of you guys wanted to see more of what I do in radiology and not just me walking around the hospital. So I figured I'd at least show you our, or one of our reading rooms and show you what our station looks like and all that stuff. So let's go to the GIGU reading room. All right, so first things first, let me turn on the lights so we can actually see what we're doing here. So these are just examples of our stations. As you can see here, this is where the attending sits right here. This is where we do like um, outside hospital reads, resident, my favorite station, resident, and another resident. So let me show you our station. Oh, there's actually candy over here. All right, so obviously we have a mouse. This is our, our key here. We do everything. And then we have this, and then we have our speech mic, which everybody always asks me about. So basically I toggle it, record, don't record, and I just speak into it. And it transcribes everything I say on the monitor. And then I can also program these side buttons to make things quicker. Like if I wanted to delete a word, I'd delete that. If I wanted to like go to the next field, I just move around. And then also has a button on the back so it's kind of like a little video game controller, which I can use with my mouse and just read stuff. And we have our big monitor, which is our big, I don't even know what size it is, but it's the super high resolution, like 4K monitor where we read all of our stuff. And then our other monitor where we put our electronic medical record uh, program or whatnot. So let me log in here and show you what it looks like. Like I said, this is our PAX system. We use Agfa PAX here. This is my main monitor. And this is where I use the Epic uh, stuff on that monitor. So let me just pull up an x-ray from Google since I can't pull up a patient's x-ray. So this is just a random x-ray from Google Chrome, as you can see. Um, oh, let me put that back. Okay, but basically what I do is I dictate from this screen. And as I'm using this, writing all, it's transcribing all of my text on this screen. I'm literally just looking at the x-ray or MRI or whatever I'm looking at, magnifying it, changing the window settings, zooming in on stuff, you know, the usual stuff. And then I'll look at pertinent information on this monitor. So this is kind of what it looks like in real time here. So this is what I dictate on. This is our images. We always pull up both images. Usually we have, this is the main image we look at. And then over here is our comparison image. So from like, say this is a chest x-ray from this morning. This would be the chest x-ray from yesterday morning. So we compare progress to see how things are running. And then we have the other window for Epic or whatever electronic medical record system you're using. So this is just an example of my station and what I do in my workflow here. And that's pretty much it. All right, it is almost noon and I'm literally just taking my first break. And by break, I mean, I'm finally going to be able to eat my breakfast. So that's how that went. I had like two post-op barium swallows to do. Then I did, well, I read a whole bunch of studies. We had a trauma come in, helped out my lower level, read some of the trauma studies, read some other studies while she was at the scanner. And yeah, just been trying to crush the list before lunchtime so we can 
each kind of have like five minutes to eat some lunch or in my case breakfast so that's exactly what i'm going to do right now and of course wifey added at the end with the amazing this is actually chia seed pudding overnight or something delicious though all right so oh i'm just gonna hit by the door so i will say it has been quite busy and it still smells like smoke in this downstairs basement stairwell if you guys remember from my last video i said the same thing but anyways we have been incredibly busy this morning i had two barium swallows to do and then i got called about an emergent lumbar puncture which i had to do they tried on the floor a couple times and failed so we do it under floral guidance and don't tell anybody but it's a lot easier to do it under floral guidance especially in people who have a ton of degenerative disease um, we actually can see that on x-ray and kind of guide our needle away from that stuff <laughs> so it makes it a lot easier than just doing it on the floor but don't tell anybody it's our little secret so it's about three o'clock right now i'm going to head up and get some sushi if you guys remember i think i had the a cucumber avocado sushi, which is actually pretty good at our hospital. So I'll probably grab that, it's three o'clock. Quick little snack. I don't really eat a big lunch here. I just kind of grab something, go back to my station, work as I eat. And sushi is just really easy to do that with. So that's what I'm doing now. Also, let me quickly show you the machine I use to do lumbar punctures. So the patient lays on the table here. You have the x-ray machine right here, points downwards. So I usually step on this pedal right here as I guide the needle down and do the lumbar puncture. While I'm doing the procedure, I'm looking at these monitors, which are pulled over next to the patient. And I slowly guide my needle down to the spinal canal. All right, so we are almost done. We have about an hour and a half left. Today has been pretty crazy, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, reading a whole bunch of stuff. And yeah, but you know what? I really just don't care because I have one day left or one weekend day of this. So at this point, I will literally read anything because why not? But what I have been doing is helping out my lower level or the, my uh, junior resident read all their studies like CTs and x-rays because I just don't read that stuff anymore. And this is honestly probably one of my last few times reading all that stuff. So I figured I would just read as much as I could to get my um, numbers up and start feeling comfortable reading that stuff again. Because after this, I may not read it for another year during my IR fellowship or even further. So might as well get the reps in while I can. So now I'm going to IR real quick to bother some people. Also, while I'm up here, I'll show you our 100 day burpee challenge, which I'm doing it. So since January 1st, we do a burpee for every day. So for instance, January 1st, you do one burpee. January 31st, you do 31 burpees. February 1st, you do 32 burpees, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all the way to 100. There aren't many people who are on our level right now. So we started with this whole thing, put a star for every day, moved on to a shorter list, it's me right there. And then now we officially made it to this list, which there's only three of us so far out of like all these people who started. Maybe there'll be more, three or four. So, so yeah, doing pretty well. I still need to do my burpees from today and I probably won't be able to do them tomorrow either because these 12 plus hour shifts kind of put a damper on my exercise routine. But the good news is you can make them up. So on Monday, I'll probably make them up and have to do like 90, which is terrible, but what can you do? I actually thought I was gonna be able to do my burpees today because one of the uh, nurse practitioners in IR brought her yoga mat in for people who don't have time to do burpees at home so we can do them in the hospital. So I thought I was gonna be able to go up there and do them this morning, but I've been just so darn busy. I haven't had any time to do it. So now it looks like I'll just have to make them all up on Monday. But if you don't know what a burpee is, I'll try to put in a video to show you right now. And you already know the deal. 
the double doors are opening and we are officially done with day one. Now I still have another day to do tomorrow, but you know what? I really just don't care because it is my last weekend shift and my last weekend day ever. So I'm gonna go home, get some sleep, see the wifey, eat some dinner and catch you guys in the morning. I mean, look at this beautiful day today. I think the sun is shining through because as you all know, this is my last shift ever. My last Sunday weekend shift ever. So I don't even care what happens. I don't care if I'm busy the whole 12 hours because I'll never do it again. Let me see if I can get in this sun. Oh yeah. It's like some reason crazy warm right now, but I don't understand why. But anyways, I'm going into work. Let's uh, Let's go ahead and crush it. In all seriousness though, I cannot believe this is my last weekend shift. I know I keep talking about it, but it's kind of a big deal because I just won't be doing this kind of stuff once I finish residency and fellowship. I won't be by myself answering the phone nonstop, answering pages nonstop from ultrasound texts, nurses, radiology texts, etc. If I ever take a diagnostic call shift again in the future, I will likely just sit in a room and just crush through studies and not have to worry about all the extracurricular stuff. That's how most private practices or academic practices are set up. At academic centers, you have residents to handle all of the pages and all of the calls. And at private practices, you have, sometimes you have administrators who answer all of the phone calls or pre-screen them before they get to the radiologist. So any interruption a radiologist has really inhibits their ability to perform at their full capacity. So that's why it's so important for radiologists to get through all their studies without interruptions. I always equate these interruptions like if you're taking a really difficult examination, like step one or MCAT or something. Imagine if someone interrupted you in the middle of like a long passage you were going through and trying to answer questions on. You would lose your train of thought, forget where you were, and eventually the clock would start ticking down and you'd be running out of time. It's the same exact thing in radiology. Anytime I get a phone call or interrupted when I'm in the middle of like a long CT scan or MRI, you lose your train of thought and you have to go back and figure out where you were. And sometimes you just have to reread everything you did just to make sure you got it and that you weren't missing anything. Because as you know, if you miss something, that can be very serious. So that's why we don't like interruptions as radiologists. All right, it is 12.45 and I am just now about to eat my breakfast, which is awesome. Um, today has been super busy. What is my hair doing? Anyways, today has been super busy. A couple traumas, a couple outside trauma transfers. And when that happens, we have to reread all of the trauma studies. And, and basically I just have this thing where like, even though I'm not entirely responsible for the lower levels list. I feel like I need to help out and I just like don't like anything on either list. I want everything clear all the time. So I just read as much as I can to make sure that's clear. So now I'm going to eat this breakfast, finally, and go back to work. All right, so remember when I said that the cafeteria has pretty good selections? Like yesterday I had sushi and all that stuff. Well, I went there today and maybe because it's a Sunday, they literally had like nothing. So I got this like little quinoa salad thing. They had like literally nothing besides like Snickers bars. So I obviously had to go to IR and get some snacks because I have to talk to my co-fellow who is on IR call this whole weekend. I have to talk about a case that I read earlier and obviously had to get some snacks. All right, so. We are on our final push. We got the jade green mint tea coffee in hand. I have four hours left of my last shift. Last weekend shift ever, so let's get to work. And ladies and gentlemen, I thought someone was coming. That was weird. Anyways, you know the deal. We are officially done with this weekend call, which means I, no longer 
ever have to do a diagnostic weekend call in residency ever again, which makes me really sad. With that being said, as always, make sure you smash that like and subscribe button and follow me on Instagram if you don't already. Leave a comment below. If I like it, I'll try to respond to it. Usually I respond in the first hour, so if you're quick to post or if you have your post notifications turned on, leave a comment and I'll respond to it quickly. Otherwise, I'll see you all on the next video. Bye.